Good morning guys, we are in month seven of this crazy year long journey through Europe and we're in the capital city of Albania. I'm telling you, we've been here for a few days and Tirana is amazing. Country number 17 is off to a super strong start. We normally start off with coffee, but guys, it's just a little too hot here for it. God almighty, ow. It's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius every day right now. We found a place called Sun Juice Shop a couple days ago and loved our smoothie, so we figured it'd be a great way to start the day. I do love coffee, but I also love a juice in the morning, and I used to make it all the time back home. This is a nice little switch up because it's really hot today, already. Our first time ever in front of a camera, or Hannah's first time ever in front of a camera, was her recording herself making a juice with her new juicer. So maybe we'll get lucky and she'll include a clip of that here. Sun Juice Shop is located in Tirana Castle. This castle is the most unique we've seen in the fact that it's been renovated just a little differently from all the others and kind of perfectly embodies what Tirana is about. While I'm sure there are a host of other periods that shape Tirana into what it is now, we're going to be primarily focusing on three in this video. The pre-Soviet era, the Soviet era, and the post-Soviet era. Within this Byzantine era castle, the old bazaar of this castle is the recently added highlight in Tirana where modern and tradition meets together. This area serves as a culinary environment for traditional cooking, but also as an area of culture and art. Currently this place is quieter because it's the morning time, but stay tuned to the end of the vlog where we come back tonight and show this place really come to life. Okay, I know this probably sounds weird, but I found the perfect way to see our next highlight. The Great Mosque of Tirana, or Namazga Mosque, is a mosque here that's nearing its construction completion but not quite done yet. But that's no problem because right next to the Tirana Castle is a huge shopping mall that has seven floors with an excellent view of the mosque from the top floor. This might be the goofiest thing Trey's done, but it does work, so I can't argue with facts. We'll get some shots of the Great Mosque from the ground, but this is unquestionably the best way to see it currently since you can't go in it. And while you're here and enjoying the view of the Great Mosque because you can't go into it or because it's too hot, you can do some shopping. There's a food court on the top floor. There's like six or seven floors here in this mall. It's huge. If you're in Tirana, then our next stop's pretty much something that you're not gonna miss. If you take out your phone and pull up Tirana on Google Maps, you'll notice pretty much every road runs toward one point in the city. Skanderbeg Square is in the heart of Tirana, and it's where Tirana's most important monuments are located. It's named after George Kastriot, commonly known as Skanderbeg, an Albanian feudal lord and military commander who led the rebellion and resistance against the Ottoman Empire in the 15th century. There's a statue of him in the square in the location where the communist-era statue of Joseph Stalin once stood. My sincerest apologies if these shots look janky, the sun is right at the top of the sky right now. The square has a host of museums, monuments, and places of worship, including our next stop. If you're in Skanderbeg Square, then you'll have no issue spotting the Edim Bay Mosque. It sits on the southeast corner of the square and has been here since its completion in the 19th century. What makes this mosque so significant outside of its location is that it's one of the few religious centers that survived the Soviet era where religious activity was banned. While closed under communist rule, the mosque reopened as a house of worship in January 1991 without the permission of the authorities. Some 10,000 people attended prayers and remarkably the police did nothing to intervene, an event now hailed as a milestone in the rebirth of religious freedom in Albania. I'm always so shocked to see how beautiful these mosques are. They're just so decorative and ornate and the detail of the painting is just amazing. Definitely a lot better artist than I am. <laughs> We forgot our water bottle today, so we had to buy one. Yep. Right next to the mosque is the clock tower. This clock tower was built in 1822 and provides a great view of Skanderberg Square. You know, if you're okay with climbing a bunch of stairs. Or if you're not scared of heights, which I am. Let's see if this goes better than the minaret in Mostar. <sighs> this is ridiculous. Why did I do this? What do we it think? It can't go worse. <laughs> it cannot go worse. Uh -huh. Let's see, 200. All right. He's scared of heights, so if I have to carry him down, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to you believe it. Exactly. Right? Thank you. Oh, we're going. Well, I think this is a little bit better than the minaret, considering there's a landing. Out here, there's probably just as much space. There. so good. I got about a third of the way up and I was like nope and then I was like man I already paid. This is beautiful. Yeah I'm just waiting for my legs to stop shaking and then after that we're gonna love this view. 
from a distance from the rail. As you can see, great grip on the rail. You got this. Oh yeah, this ain't no problem. Oh yeah. In case you haven't noticed, Albanian people are wonderful. While we're here in the square and seeing some monuments and landmarks around the pre-Soviet and Soviet era, I thought it'd be cool to see something from the Soviet era that's been repurposed to something creative and unique. We're at Bunk Art 2, and if you're wondering why we aren't at Bunk Art 1, it's because it's not the center of town like the second exhibit is. Tickets are 500 lek, which is about 5 US dollars. Bunk Art is an underground contemporary art and history museum located inside Soviet-era bunkers. As I mentioned, Bunk Art 1 is a little outside the center of the city and is the bigger of the two, but Bunk Art 2 is the newer and higher rated online. This perfectly captures what I think Toronto does extremely well. They have all these historical monuments and rather than knock them down, they just repurpose them and make them something new and creative. One thing about Tirana is it is brutally hot in the summer, as we've mentioned numerous times today. So we are walking down Ruga Murat Toptani, or Murat Toptani Road. This is a shaded little pedestrian street lined with restaurants along the way. I love Greek food. I feel like we never need an excuse to get Greek food, and we're right here. Albania borders Greece. It's gotta be good Greek food. The perfect tray bite without the onions and the tomatoes. One thing we have noticed too is it's always good to go to the bank before you go to a restaurant or go to a store. Nine times out of 10, a lot of places are only going to accept cash. I don't think we've paid with card, but maybe twice here, and that's just to get groceries. So definitely have cash on you if you go to a restaurant. One bummer about today is that we can't go and visit the Pyramid of Tirana because it's currently being renovated. The Pyramid of Tirana is a Soviet-era structure and museum built in 1988 honoring the legacy of communist Albanian leader Enver Hoxha. Now it's being converted into a people's monument that contains cafes, studios, workshops, and classrooms where free lessons will be available to young Albanians. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's really cool that Albania doesn't knock down any of these old Soviet-era buildings. Rather, they just repurpose them and use them for something positive. Not too far away from the center of town is Grand Park, although it's like a half mile walk, which currently feels like five miles right now. I really just need to pick myself up off the ground and just press on. Since it's 99 degrees, a lot of the people here know you probably don't want to be in the park walking around, so even though it is nice and shaded, most people are indoors because they're not crazy like we are. Hannah and I walked over here yesterday, and it's a really cool park to enjoy walking around the lake. You'll see people fishing, running, and enjoying the little play areas around here. It's a nice spot to get away from the busy center of the town. We found a cool off station. This is incredible. Trey's going first. <laughs> get after it, hey ma. Just stand there. Yes, queen. I don't love this. <laughs> uh, it's not cold enough. It needs to be colder really and it needs to cold. not be so wet. Like I'm well, soaked now. It's spitting out water. Believe it or not, this is the coolest day of the week that we had to film. So we were trying to figure out when we were gonna film and it's been like 105 every day. Today, the high was like, what, 100? 100. So we were like, okay, 100, not too yes. terrible. It could be so much worse. came back to Tirana Castle for dinner because it's a really cool vibe at night and also there's a million options to choose from. I don't really have any clue what I'm going to order here. It says steak, seafood, and pizza, but you can only order pizza upstairs. Whatever I get, it's not going to be pizza this time. We definitely didn't expect to get a salad, but we got a salad to share. <laughs> it was a last minute decision. We both got pasta. I got the shrimp and zucchini pasta. It's delicious. Or, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure it's delicious. And I got a pasta with some beef, I guess. It's like a beef pasta with truffle sauce. It's so good. Oops. 
what I get for playing at the dinner table. They also brought us some lemon sorbet shooter type things on the house. Albania is the best. Tirana is amazing. I love this place so much. It's my favorite. Very I love it. Huh? Oh yeah. As I mentioned earlier, the old bazaar has been reshaped into an area full of shops and restaurants, sticking with the theme here in Tirana of making the most of historical spaces. From Byzantine era castles being converted into dining attractions to Soviet era bunkers and museums repurposed to art exhibits and youth development facilities, it's really hard not to be impressed by this city. The skyline's covered by buildings under construction, showing that Tehran is rapidly moving towards its future. I can't wait to see what it becomes. Is it recording? Oh. It was constructed in... <laughs> what is going on? Hannah has an audience. <laughs> right next to... Right next... If you're Greek and you're watching this video, you have the best food. Holy cow, thank you so much. The Pyramid of Tirana is a Soviet-era structure and museum honoring the legacy of comp. However, get ready, I don't know. You wanna take your shrimp and you wanna first give them a big old kiss on the lips. 